Hi everybody, I'm Buck WSR Weezer, putting the do in the do-it-yourself. It's August, so why not work on a snowblower, right? This snowblower was delivered to me not that long ago, and I don't know much about it, but our goal today is to get it running. My initial observation, and I'll point this out to you, bring the camera over, is it looks like we have had a problem with squirrels. Could be mice, but I'm going to say squirrels because squirrels around here are attracted to fuel-related items, fuel lines. They've been a real pest to me on different uh, projects. Well, changing out this fuel cap is no big deal. Um, but I learned also that this had been sitting out in someone's yard for a while. I don't know how long. And so with the fuel cap chewed up, it's very possible and even likely that we've got water in this fuel tank. So I kind of want to make, going to make sure we clean that out, make sure it's not filled with water. And we may end up having to clean or replace the carburetor. But let's see what we're looking at here. It's a Craftsman Snowblower 27 inch. It looks pretty nice, really. Um, it's got a Briggs and Stratton engine and the date code on the engine is uh, 04. So you get your model number type and then the number below it is the code and that you probably can't say but the first two digits of your code tell you the year of manufacture. So this is 04. So you're, we're looking at a snowblower that's about 15 years old. Don't know how much it's been used, but apparently it's sat for a while. So our goal today is to open it up, clean out that fuel tank, take a look also at the carburetor and see if we can get this thing running. This has a kill switch, like a safety key. This tube here uh, operates the choke on the carburetor. And then you've got a, a tube that connects to this uh, primer bulb. So we can disconnect that. Hang that there. Alright, so we've got the carburetor down here. Still pretty hard to get to, so I'm going to take off some more of this plastic shroud. And we'll clean up in there and get better access to the carburetor down there. Taking a look at what we got here. These look like eight or ten millimeter bolts. They also have a Torx bit capability. That guy. carburetor pretty good right here fuel line coming from the gas tank right here carburetor bowl right down here now I looked in the gas tank it does have liquid in there again it could be fuel it could be water I don't really know but I'm going to drain out the whole thing disconnecting the fuel line from the carburetor right here with that clamp and I'm going to let all of that gas slash water, whatever it is, drain away. And it also looks like I'm going to take a phone call. The carburetor is held on with two probably 10 millimeter bolts, maybe they're 3 8 inch. I'm not entirely sure right here and here. This bracket on the front is just what held on that cover plate. Uh, 
might try first off to see if I can move them out of the way. I am not, I live in New Jersey, I don't have a snow blower. To be honest, I don't really want one. And I'll tell you why while I'm doing this. We have cold winters and a couple of snowfalls each year. But the reality is, if you've got a snow blower, it's sitting in your shed 360 days a year. If you use it five times, that's a big winner. So I, and then when it does snow at my place, I have a driveway. It's easy to shovel off with a shovel because it doesn't get that thick. It's overhung by a lot of trees. So the snow doesn't accumulate that much on my driveway. And I just decided it's not worth having a snow blower. Okay, so maybe there'll be a snowfall, one snowfall per winter where I'm busting it by hand with a shovel. In which a snow blower would be nice. But there's some snow removal things that the snow blower can't do for me anyway. For instance, I, it won't, uh, won't get the snow off the top of my car. That to me is the hardest part. That's what I dislike the most. So I'm not really a snowblower guy. Just decided for me, don't need it. Don't want it. Just another item taking up space in my shed. What size are these? That yeah, looks like it's probably 10 millimeter. So I want to take down the carburetor. On this particular carburetor, there is only one arm coming from the governor, and that's this one arm here. And uh, we'll take that off after we unbolt it. But I'm going to unbolt it first. Take it down. I bet when we open up this carburetor, it's going to be really interesting taking a look at the condition of the carburetor bolt. I'll be surprised if it isn't pretty gunked up. And again, that's what happens with the snowblower that's sitting 360 days out of the year and not being used very often. The gas sits in the bottom of that carburetor bowl. If you don't like drain the tank and run it dry, gums it up you got to clean it or change it every season. It's not that big a deal, but to me, I'm going to do all that work. All right, so one bolt comes off. But I will tell you this. Sure, a lot more enjoyable doing this in August. It's nice and pleasant, warm. Hear those sounds of summer. You're not freezing. I just don't like to be cold, people. All right, so here's a spacer. So that's coming out too. And the carburetor's now free. I'm just going to take this bar off. Now there's a thin wire as well as that hook. I'm gonna get the needle nose pliers. To first take up the uh, thin wire, pull that off, and now this should come out just by twisting the carburetor. All right, so there it is. Completely comes off. The uh, primer hose is still connected. You know, that's a good kind. Of, if this is were old and cracked, that'd be a good kind of thing to replace. All right, so now here on the bottom, what I'm going to do is open that up by removing this, this this plug that nut and we'll take a look inside and depending on what we see 
we'll make the decision if we're going to just clean this thing out or if we're going to replace the whole carburetor. So up here on the bench, let's see if we can take this off. Half inch socket. We may get some gas slash water. Not sure which. Does not smell like gas. Feels smells like nothing. So I'm guessing it might be water. So here's inside of our our carburetor bowl. It does not look that bad. I'm pretty sure that is water though. The water inside your carburetor is not what you want. But fortunately, there's not a lot of crud in there. It's not caked up with rust. So I think we're going to be able to clean this out. I'm going to spray out the carburetor with uh, carburetor cleaner, carburetor and air intake cleaner, Walmart, save money. And we're just going to try and do a, a clean out job of this and spray some carburetor cleaner through the holes. Now what I want to show you very carefully with this plug here is it's we're going to clean out this plug too because these tend to clog. I've got a video called 10 minute mower fix that uses this kind of carburetor and after storage over the winter these orifices can get clogged up. So we're going to we're going to take a safety pin or a paper clip and clean out all of these because the gas is sucked through these holes in the side and then up. So this plug definitely needs to be clean. So there's our bowl. The bowl looks clean. So spray through this. Okay, so you spray through the top. It should come out the two holes on the side. Listen people, gloves are recommended. I know that, but I ran out. Good, so this is really, that feels really clean. I'm happy with that. Okay, so here's the gas tank and I told you I wanna take it down. Obviously we got some bolts to take off. One here, one here. Coming around maybe these two. Right here. Is this guy gonna work? Or is it this guy? That looks better. There's one. Is this a kill switch? A lot of kill switch options on this. Alright, piece coming down here. Bracket coming off here. I guess 10 millimeter. Wow, I'm brilliant.
I got so many kill switches on this thing. Alright. And the tank comes off, people. Here we go. Charge battery pack. Alright, I'll do that soon. Alright, so here's the tank. I'm going to empty it out. I'm going to blow it out completely with like my shop vac or something. Rinse it out. Blow it out dry. Make sure it's all good to go. And then we'll come back and we'll reinstall this puppy. Well, here's the gas tank. It's cleaned out. And uh, really the biggest challenge is making sure it gets fully dried out on the inside. I I blew a lot of compressed air through this guy because you don't want any you don't want any moisture in your gas tank. So it's time to remount this guy and uh, put this thing back together and see if it's going to run for us. Is this the guy from here? Or was it this guy to here? Well we'll figure that out. We'll attach this, we'll bolt this down. I'll put the carburetor back on and then we will uh, attempt to fire it up. So let me do all that, reversing the steps that we took to get to this point. When it's back together, I'll pull you in and see if it'll run. Well, just so you know, I did get a new cap for this gas tank since the squirrels had chewed up the other one. I mean, that is the reason we are doing this project to begin with. So I guess it's a good idea to get a new one. little project may be postponed temporarily till a storm blows over. By the way, this cap is Briggs and Stratton part number 792647. Doesn't look entirely like the previous one, but hopefully it's going to fit. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, so good. That's what we needed. But I saw something on here that really kind of made me chuckle. It has electric start where you can use 110 volts with an extension cord instead of the pull starter. See this guy right here? Plug in your uh, house current right there. Push your button for electric start. You see the note on the top? Do not use in rain. Wow, that's so great to know. Yeah, I'm not sure how many people are actually blowing snow in the rain. I usually the snow blowers are only used in snow. So I got a chuckle out of that. Now, yeah, I guess it could be you're blowing snow and it starts raining. Temperatures aren't that cold, but really need that warning. I think the electric start is superfluous, by which I mean unnecessary. Because if you've got your machine tuned up, ready to go, it should start. It really should start on one or two pulls. Let's add the fuel line right there. But, now you know, not use that electric start in the rain. Okay. All right, I'm going to add some fuel and then we'll give it a go. Well, that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? No more stalling, surging, uh, 
I think we fixed it. So thanks for watching me on this project. I hope that helps you on your projects. Uh, watch out for those squirrels. They'll, they'll chew up your gas uh, system. Thanks for watching. It's Buck WSR Weezer. Leave your comments or questions, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.